Well, there's just something about combat field knives that I connect with. Say like the Topps Mohawk Hunter and my heavily used Gerber strong arm. Well, Buck Knives is coming out of the shadows, swinging hard for 2020 with this new Buck ground combat knife. Love seeing that 5160 on this blade. USA made, full tank construction, polymer sheath, nylon backer, good price point made in america i mean guys there's a lot going on with this blade that's why i threw down my hard-earned money so that i can show you guys what this knife can do in this video today because there's just something about field knives i love their strength their durability their just lines sometimes it's just aesthetics you're just like oh man that just looks like such a like a tool man that i can just thump on i could trust my life to uh and that's just the feel that field knives tend to give now they're not perfect knives by any means they usually have some drawbacks when it comes to extended woods craft type of tasks whereas like a thin bush craft you know scanty ground knife would obviously be a better tool for some of those tasks but i've had a chance to really thump on this ground combat knife we're going to talk through all of its performance capabilities drawbacks today throw in those two other blades as competitive options to discuss today and just discuss is this something that's worth throwing on an lbe system maybe to put in a go bag bug out bag you know whatever it may be gift to somebody who's going out on deployment law enforcement military or somebody who just loves knives in general and you just are, love field knives like i do we're going to break that all down today in this video to see what buck is producing with this ground combat knife so with that guys let's get to it and see what this blade can do all right guys man i i've had very few knives that actually have this drop an aggressive honestly like a dagger it's almost like a dagger that has the ability to be a field knife as well they've really uh, captured that capability and what's really cool is that you can also get this uh, in a tanto version as well so they do have a tanto version available that you can take a look at if that's more to your liking than a spear point but this is definitely an aggressive dropped spear point now this is made out of 5160 high carbon steel with a rockwell of 57 to 58 and it's got the boss heat treat on it i have used this steel from buck many times before i love it it's got really good edge retention it's very tough and durable i've used it on much larger tools like the buck thug and the buck punk and several of their other tools and i just love it they do a really good job with the heat treat it's a, a i would put it on par with anything coming out of like a k-bar 1095 tops you know uh, se even um, it's very very good i've been very pleased with it over the years it's a it's a good very tough um uh, high carbon spring steel. So I, I dig that a lot. Now this has been Cerakoted uh, and you can get them in a couple different color combinations, but that's a very wear resistant, help will fight against the rust. It is prone to rust. So just keep that in consideration. Where are you planning on deploying this? Is this the best option? We'll talk through that here in a little bit but very, very good steel. I'm very happy with that for the price that we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, what we're looking at is five and a half inches overall, and we're looking at a thickness back here at the stock, and it basically holds it all the way through to the transition of the tip. Um, what you're looking at is 0 0.2, so it's a very robust, thick, uh, blade in that regard it's going to come in the knife itself is 9.6 ounces and then uh, with the sheath it's going to float right around 15 ounces so just under a pound total package um, for that so guys that's what we're looking at here with the blade itself uh, you can get it again black and tan i think those are the two color combinations that they have right now now the the first thing right out of the gate i want to hit this tip i have literally reviewed hundreds of fixed blades and done hundreds of tip tests this has one of the most unique, robust, and I think most focused on piercing tips I have ever seen to date. Uh, this tip right here is super thick. Uh, I did tons of stabbing with this, and the way it's designed, it's almost like, I don't know, like my buddy was saying it was like almost like a diamond kind of, uh, in the sense of like different angles that it has going on there that when you stab it in and then you go sideways for a lateral motion which is one of the hardest things you can do on a knife and that's the most like prone area for chipping and or breaking it actually slides itself out of the material it removes itself out to re relieve even some of that lateral motion and then because it's so just dropped and aggressive i mean that is like an amazing amazing piercing tip guys and not only its robustness but then also at the same time not not um relieving or getting rid of any of the strength of it but still giving it such a piercing 
angle uh, that you could penetrate lots of material, man-made or man itself, and that thing is just gonna go right, right through. And then that massive swedge right there in the center, um, still giving it that really good strength Again, almost making it seem like a dagger, uh, but giving it even more of just a good piercing capability is just phenomenal. But what you will find a lot of the time with knives like this would be uh, because it's designed basically as a sharpened pry bar or a piercing tool, the relief edges always aren't great. They have done a great job with the relief edge here on this blade. Uh, it is a saber grind that's gonna go up pretty short. So it is a short saber grind. So think of most field knives, tactical knives, combat knives. It's gonna have that. This is not a bushcraft knife. This isn't like a full flat grind. It's not good for food prep. It's not good. Um, it's, it wouldn't be my first choice to go out in the woods and spend a day, you know, practicing my woods craft. I would definitely go with like a Mora or something like before, before this. But as a general utility tool, the grinding is great. It does really, really well. I could do feather sticks very nicely. You can do notching, um, not too difficultly because you can either put your thumb back here or you can even put it kind of on that front flat portion right there. Um, even going through all sorts of man-made material, which you would definitely consider going through um, paracord. Uh, if you were using this as a jump knife, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, and then you could, you, you know, if you flipped over in a Humvee, something like that, going through seat belt, very easy to do. Because of the edge geometry, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in competitive options, uh, I had a little bit of a difficult time with hemp rope just because the, the edge is just so straight for so long and there's no curvature. I kind of had to do some hard, I really had to put pressure on it to get through the hemp rope. But for paracord and seat belt, not an issue in any other man made materials and then Woodscraft for this, again, hear me, for the for this style of knife performed very well because of that high edge, but it didn't chip, it didn't cause problems when you're working with the tool. So the edge geometry cuts very well, but I didn't have any sh sort of a fragileness in the edge. You know, it didn't roll or chip in any way, even with batoning, even though this isn't a great knife for batoning, just because of uh, the massive swedge is just gonna beat up your knife pretty quickly and because of how sh thin from edge to spine, meaning like it's really short. Uh, it's just not great for, I mean, you can do some minor kindling, but nothing that you would want to do. So what you need to know right out of the gate is we're looking at micarta handle scales. They have many different color patterns. This is kind of a mixture color pattern. Um, they have black, I think they have like kind of a cool other pattern and then tan. Um, so lots of options there. The screws are really nice flush with the handle scales. You're looking at five and a quarter inches overall handle length. And then you're looking at one, or sorry, excuse me, 0 0.75 on the thickness as well, right there. And what they have done here is obviously with the thought of making it a combat utility knife, ground combat, hello. Um, but I was so intrigued by the way that this squared off top here is designed. I was like, what is that? And is that just going to cause the weirdest feel when it comes to gripping this knife in your hand? And it does not at all. It perfectly fills out your hand right there. So they must have just had like tons of people gripping this knife and giving feedback to give you a really slim, uh, slim down design, but this one full little part there because it goes right into your hand and there's no hot spot. So guys, this has no hot spots for a combat knife. You know, a lot of times they're designed to be just be like high traction, kind of clunky, squared off and blocky, just to like grip it, do what you need to do real quick, throw it back in the sheath. This I've held for quite a period of time and done, you know, feather sticking with it. I've done woodscraft with it. I've done some harder, like pushing through um, polymer and rubber and those type of things, which would definitely create hot spots usually if it had any. And this doesn't. I mean, uh, uh, it's not like a Mora, you know, or some sort of like perfectly contoured bushcraft knife. But for a combat utility knife, it is very good full ergonomics for my large size hands right there. Just so you can see all of that. Plenty of real estate out the back end. No uh, non-lethal pommel necessarily. I mean, the pommel is exposed. Uh, so, I mean, I guess you could do some stuff. It's kind of squared off and flat, so you could do some minor like hammering if you had to probably. So just really, really nice. No issues. That cut in is really nice and deep right there. So I'm, I don't feel like I'm accidentally going to slide up and hurt myself in any way. Uh, no jimping. So that was kind of interesting. No jimping on the t upper spine uh, there. But I mean, it cradles my finger very nicely. The Ricasso is pretty close right there. So it doesn't feel like the edge is too far away like some other combat knives. I'm thinking like the old design of the SRK, you know, or something like that. Uh, and just really feels good. It's not too narrow, like stick stick feeling either. Just slightly coffins out right there. 
the handle is even stacked so you can see this like in layers of micarta kind of like little steps up to the top and then back down so it's not just the squared off flat blocky thing um, and so those transitions give you tons of grip but they again they don't cause any pain from all of my experience and use so i'm very happy with the design i'm very happy with the way it feels you're going to get heavy traction so you feel like you have a lot of control over the knife but you don't have any hot spots when you're using it for an extended period of time if you needed to with this tool, which is super important in any knife, I think, to give you, and particularly with the, the feeling of this being a ground combat knife, um, giving you the heavy traction and lock up to use this very aggressively, but it's not going to cause pain and aching in your hand. So you want to put it back in the sheath as soon as possible. For this style of knife, it's a joy to use and you can use it for an extended period of time without problems. So we're gonna hit the sheath and for the price guys and just the options that this is offering you with you, you're getting a really good layout and I don't think there's any need to upgrade. Uh, what you're getting is a polypropylene polymer based sheath that is pancake, it's completely ambidextrous. Cool point is that this same sheath that fits the, the spear point will also fit the Tanto. So they fit together. So if you had it lashed to a particular um, loadout and you like using your Tanto maybe for deployment, but you like the spear point more for hiking and camping or just different, you know, environments, whatever it may be, you don't have to necessarily strip off and put the other one on. You can interchange the blades in the same sheath, which is pretty sweet. So uh, that's cool. You got screw retention points. So you screw those down and it can tighten up the um, lockup or you can loosen them back up if you want a really fast, easy pull on there lots of other lashing points that you can completely take it, this off of this nylon backer and use your own either blade tech locks or you can do other molly locks or you know paracord however you want to lash it to your um, rig system which is really good and just streamline if you don't want the nylon the nylon backer you can obviously swap to the other side make it completely ambidextrous you got a drainage hole you got a really good thumb ramp right there that you can easily grab deploy and your hand naturally sits right there in the groove so you're not going to have to do any sort of walk up even in a reverse grip same concept your pinky is going to go right there and boom you'll be able to pull real real fast in that regard which is all super super good uh, it's pretty quiet just slight rattle side to side and maybe if you screwed those down it could remove some of that you do have pals webbing on the back of that nylon you have a massive belt loop that would easily be able to fit you know two and a half inch you know tactical belts that type of stuff and you can actually open it up put the on your belt without taking your belt off the other cool kind of interesting feature is that you can actually take these velcro straps off hide away the first one and there's a third strap back here that's tucked away right now so you can actually get the blade closer to you walk it up the nylon basically and then you got this paracord strap with attachment that will go over the handle and then that gives you a secondary lashing point so they really tried to give you a lot of lashing capabilities all right folks let's go ahead and hit uh, price point and we're going to run in some competitive options here and like i've been saying throughout the video you get a lot for your money i paid a hundred dollars for this thing uh, that is the normal going rate for this on amazon blade hq gp knives uh, you can even check out smoky mountain uh, knife works and check them out I, I haven't seen it there yet i don't think but uh, they may be carrying it soon i would assume um, and uh, i mean for a hundred dollars regardless if you go with the tanto or the drop point a spear point version here um, different color combinations all of it that is a great price point you get a lot of knife for that money so folks we'll include all those links for you below i appreciate it if this knife or other knives um, that we look at here today connect with you only if they connect with you if you purchase through the hyperlinks that we offer to you it means a lot so the really the first knife that came to my mind when i saw this and got it in hand was the tops mohawk hunter we reviewed this about a year ago really connected with me i love this kind of style field knife um, this thing is USA made 1095 micarta handle scales very similar grinding very similar thickness blade geometry uh, you know shape all that the tops will come with a kydex sheath um, taco so the the footprint is a little bit smaller uh, but not quite as many lashing options to to speak of so pros and cons are just kind of how you want to deploy the knife and guys i'll tell you both of these knives are very similar the one thing i will note is that the tops does have more of a sweep whereas the buck has definitely more of almost a drop into that really piercing tip 
Uh, so what that means is that I would say on more field work, meaning like uh, woods craft work, the Mohawk Hunter um, edge geometry and just the sweep gives it a little bit of an edge. It's just a little bit easier to woodwork with it than um, the buck is, but the buck will outperform in piercing and stabbing capability. So then guys, next up we have the Gerber Strong Arm USA made 420 high carbon steel. Um, it does have a fully ambidextrous polymer sheath. Uh, just like the buck, uh, the tops, again, will not have an ambidextrous sheath either. So pros and cons there, depending on if you're a righty or a lefty. Uh, lots of lashing options, lots of, you know, things to go through there. Um, this guy's going to go for about $70. So for about $30 less, um, so you will save a little bit on cost there. It does not have an exposed tang, so it's a full overmold, but we have done so much work and when i say we i'm not talking about only myself but also the whole youtube community literally tried to break this knife tried to you know get it messed up and it just came back to me dull after like 10 youtubers going through walls and doors and car car stuff and you know every type of outdoor activity you could do so uh it'll have a 90 degree spine as well as the buck um the handle again will be maybe a little bit warmer to the touch uh, and just different you know you got those flares top and bottom guard some people like that some people won't uh definitely the buck is going to have a better quality of steel i would argue probably about the same rust resistance maybe the buck will rust a little bit quicker 420 seems to uh, ru not rust as quickly um, but the other thing to note as well is just that the tip on the gerber is just kind of um, overall thicker definitely has more of a sweep up less piercing as same with like with the tops it just has that a lot more belly near the end there so an outdoor task it'll actually be a little bit better from what i have seen um, in that if you're using it again like for hiking and camping and you know backpacking and that type of stuff you'll just get a little bit better use out of the gerber um, very tough but i would say that the buck is going to give you even stronger because of the exposed tang there you could argue you know in in worst case scenario something happens to the handle obviously you can take the handle scales off just wrap them uh, and then you do have just a more piercing tip there well, folks, there you have it. I hope this video has been fun, entertaining, but giving you the data that you need. You know, in every video, it doesn't matter to me whether or not you pick these up. I just want to give you the information, data points, performance levels that I'm seeing so you know what to expect if this is the knife for you or maybe some of the other competitive options. But guys, I got to tell you, this is an epic blade. This is an epic blade. Buck has completely outdone themselves with this knife. I am super happy with its layout, designing, the sheath options, the price, all of it. They're hitting it like none other. I would love to see Buck begin to get into the realm of this level of materials and quality, start producing several other ant combat and like survival and outdoor knives um, and hit a good price point like this with some of these materials I think would be phenomenal. So if this design connects with you, I think you'd be very happy with its performance capability and designing so appreciate you guys look forward to reading the comments below check out the other video popping up subscribe if you're not a current subscriber we're throwing up content like this every single week and always remember stay equipped stay prepared and we'll see you out there